I'm Jane. This is the Rainy Janery. Join me on my crafting and sewing adventures. Hi, welcome back. If you're new here, thanks so much for joining me. This video is the next step in a series where I make an Edwardian gown based on a figurine that was handed down by my grandmother. I will be creating the entire garment from Hat's shoes. And if you missed the first half of this series, I recommend you start here. I'll put a link up here to the project announcement video where I go into more depth about the history and the research. If this series sounds interesting to you and you'd like to continue to join me on this journey, please click subscribe below. At this point, I have already finished the combinations and the petticoat and adjusted my corset as well as my dress form. So this week, I am making a corset cover, but all the videos in this series have been very similar. So talk, so talk, make mistakes, discuss mistakes, you get the picture. I thought I'd do something a little different this week, mix it up and do a pattern review instead. I will have some detail shots of the finished piece uh, so you can see what I actually accomplished, but I thought I would review the pattern instead of talking about my process of sewing. Really, this garment went together incredibly easy and there wasn't much that happened that was really interesting to film. It was just a lot of sewing. Let's get into a discussion about this pattern. So the pattern for the corset cover that I chose was the Truly Victorian Edwardian Underwear Pattern. I think it is TVE02. I chose to make my corset cover out of a lightweight linen. Uh, it's the same linen that I used for my combinations. It's the same linen that I used for a lot of my 18th century undergarments as well. It is from Dharma Trading Company and it is their three, I think it's 3.8 ounce linen. So overall, I just want to say that this is a really great pattern. I have mostly positive things to say about it. There were just a few hiccups in the line that are things that I think that maybe Truly Victorian could tweak a little bit, or there were things that were my mistakes that I didn't do well that I think affected the final outcome of the build. First up is printing out the pattern. Printing out a pattern on a Mac is horrible. If you have a PC, I'm incredibly jealous of you, if only for that reason. A lot of patterns come as a huge plotting document that's, you know, 40 inches by 50 inches. On a Mac, it's almost impossible to print each individual page. One of the things I loved about the Truly Victorian pattern is that they provided a, a tiled PDF pattern. So you could just print out which pages you needed. This also was really great because I didn't need every piece of this pattern. I was only making the corset cover. I could pick and choose the pages that I wanted to print and it saved a lot of paper and waste and time. The next thing up that was a bit strange about the pattern was the pattern sizing and how you go about picking the pieces. There's an entire paragraph in the pattern directions about measuring yourself, making sure you pick the right size. I would highly recommend following their instructions. I ended up picking very different pattern pieces than if I had just gone off of my base measurements. Uh, my back pattern piece was actually smaller and my front pattern pieces were a step larger. I had heard that they have this method from Noelle from Costuming Drama. And I think she, her sizes mean that she doesn't actually have to do that method, but um, I actually found it really helpful. Mine fit really well in the end. So I definitely think it's worth the time to go through the process of, of doing the adjusted pattern sizing. Another thing to watch out with this pattern is some of the directions can be a little confusing. I always try to read through the pattern beforehand so I have a general idea of what's going on, but some of the instructions I had to read like four or five times. I would also pay a lot of attention to when the pattern instructs which side of the fabric to put together, right sides together, or wrong sides together, etc. There were a couple of times where I didn't pay enough attention and had to seam rip the whole thing apart. So just read the directions very carefully and make sure you understand which pieces go where, how they're finished how they overlap. The facing on the front of this garment actually goes from the inside to the outside. So the finished front that you see is the facing. Luckily with the linen, it's essentially two-sided. So it, it didn't really matter. I didn't have a pattern to match up, but 
there were times where I got a bit confused and didn't understand that the facing was supposed to be on the other side. Also, when you're putting the sleeve pieces together, because the front facing is essentially on the wrong, on the other side than it normally is, it orienting all those pieces got confusing in the instructions as well. Additionally, there were also a couple of pieces of this pattern that I found either incredibly wasteful of either material or time. For example, the ruffle that they have you make and cut out, they give you three pattern pieces that you then sew together into one long strip. Fine. But then you divide it up into four equal pieces that are roughly 30 inches long. So why don't why doesn't the pattern just have you cut out four ruffles that are the same size? Why do we have to sew them together and then cut them back apart and then refinish them? I really don't, I still don't understand why the pattern has you do this. If someone knows and would like to explain it in the comments, I would love to know why you had to do this. I think I did it because I'd already, before I realized it, I'd already cut the pattern pieces out and I had to just keep moving forward at that point. If I had been more cognizant of that beforehand, I think when I cut out the pattern, I would have just cut out four individual pieces or one long piece that's the length that you need it. But it seemed weird to have to cut out three, make one and then cut it into four and then hem it. I don't know. I'm still confused. The last issue I had with this pattern had to do with the mock-up ability of the pattern. A strange thing to say, but bear with me. I did not do a mock-up of this garment. With the adjusted pattern fitting and the sizes, I felt that it was close enough to my measurements and I figured enough other people had made this pattern that if there had been a major issue, they would have fixed it. So I didn't do a mock-up. I just figured it was unlikely that it was going to be radically off in some direction. The issue I ran into is when I was adding the ruffles. The ruffles on the finished garment were so heavy that it dragged the front of the bodice all the way down past my bust point. So the ruffles were all hanging around my rib cage and my waist. The garment was supposed to be pigeon breasted, so kind of full in the front, but it had slipped so far that it was all hanging around my stomach. Unless I had done a full mock-up and made the garment in its entirety, there's no way I could have known that the ruffles were going to affect the garment in that way. If I had made a mock-up, I would have just cut out the bodice pieces and made sure that they fit me. And in a mock-up, because there's nothing weighing the front of the garment, it would have fit. So I had no idea until I got the garment basically almost finished that it wasn't going to work. Another issue with the ruffles is that they are sewn into the facing and into the finishing in the arm's eye. So there's no way, once the ruffles were on and everything was finished, it was too difficult to take the ruffles off or adjust them because they're part of the finished garment at, at the arm's eye. In the end, I had to take some really severe darts out of the front of the garment and that was the only way I could come up with to actually raise, lift the weight off of the front of the garment so that it sat at the proper angle. And those darts ended up having to go into the ruffles. Now, I don't think you can really tell if I tell you that they're there, it's pretty obvious, but I think as the silhouette of the garment looks right and the ruffles are still continuous, so it doesn't look terrible, it just is not ideal. So if you are looking into making this garment, I highly recommend if you think you're going to use a really heavy lace or really heavy ruffle on the front, do a full mock-up and maybe just pin the ruffles on to begin with or even just pin all the fabric that you're going to use across and test it out on a mock-up because it ended up being a very strangely shaped garment after I had all that weight on the front. And I think lastly, the only major alteration I made to this garment other than the darts was I did ties in the front instead of buttons. And that was only because I didn't have buttons on hand. <laughs> so I used some of the six inch leftover pieces from Family See My Corset, which was great. I'm so glad I got to use some of those up and just made some ties in the front instead. And that is it for my corset cover. I think it came out incredibly beautifully. I also think that it 
looks so beautiful with the pair of combinations and with the petticoat. I'm just thrilled at how all the pieces look together as a, as a set of undergarments. And that is my undergarments finished as well. Next up, I am diving into making the gown. So join me next week where I start working on the pattern and getting all of that put together. If you like what I do here and you enjoyed this video, please subscribe down below. And if you would like to help my channel growth, please go to the description, click on my coffee link and buy me a coffee. Join me next time for more crafting, costuming, and lots of fun. See you soon.